Today, we're gonna to look at the tax plan of a couple who we recently met with who wanted to retire at around age 60. They had saved around $2 million for retirement. So this video hopefully will be helpful for you as I share some of the initial tax planning uh, we walked them through to evaluate whether Roth conversions made sense for them since they plan to retire at the end of this year, which is about five years uh, before Medicare. So I'm gonna go through their financial situation and you're gonna be able to see how uh, strategic Roth conversions have the potential to make a huge impact on reducing your lifetime tax bill. And for them, it has the potential to save them possibly hundreds, if not thousands of dollars in taxes, as you'll see towards the end of the video. And if you haven't met yet, my name is Matt. I'm a certified financial planner and advisor over at One Degree Advisors. And on this channel, I make videos to help you retire early with confidence. Okay, so this is Ben and Jennifer, not real names, but they will be around age 60 and 59 at retirement, which they plan to retire next year. And overall, their total uh, equity is approximately $2,170,000. They actually own their home free and clear, but I purposely left this out because they're not gonna take income from their home. But when we break down their balance sheet, they have around $600,000 in a taxable non-retirement account. Uh, ben has a 401k worth around $900,000, also an IRA with $300,000, and then Jennifer <clears throat> has a 403b here. This is valued around $200,000. As far as cash goes, they also have $170,000, which is in checking and a high yield savings account. So if we're looking at this from a tax allocation standpoint, about 70% of their dollars, of their 1.4 million to be exact, is in that tax deferred bucket, which has been saving them taxes while they've been working. And then 30% or $600,000 is in a tax a taxable account here. So we can see here that having this good chunk in a tax deferred bucket will likely lead to some pretty hefty required minimum distributions later in life. This is why Roth conversions for this couple was uh, particularly relevant and why this might be relevant if you are watching this and you also have a significant chunk of your assets in that tax deferred bucket. And this all makes sense when you understand what some call the retirement tax valley. So let's take a 10,000 foot view of how Ben and Jennifer's annual tax bill generally might look throughout their lifetime if they retire at age 60 and don't do any Roth conversions and instead kept their income uh, really low during those initial years of early retirement and follow that traditional rule of thumb going taxable, tax deferred, and finally tax free. So the picture that you're looking at my screen is that tax valley. It's basically showing in 2024, they both are paying a pretty significant taxes because they're still working. And then when we start retirement, as you can see in 2025 to about 2030, their tax bill is extremely low because they are using a brokerage account in those early retirement years before Medicare. Now, this can feel like a really good thing early in retirement that they saved in those IRAs and 401ks, which are growing tax deferred. And the IRS is not so patiently waiting to take up to 30 to 40% of those accounts in taxes. That's why Roth conversions can help smoothen out the ride. So let's take a look at how this looks for their situation. Okay, so what you're looking at my screen is basically the analysis we do when we're running Roth conversions over the long term. And basically what it's doing is running an analysis based on Ben and Jennifer's balance sheet, their life expectancies, and assuming approximately a 7% annualized return starting at retirement. And what we're trying to do here is optimize their withdrawal strategy and say based on all these different factors, what would be the withdrawal plan that would give you the lowest possible lifetime tax bill. So in their case, we're finding that based on their situation, if we fill up the 12% tax bracket with Roth conversions over the next decade or so, which I'll show you here in a second, as opposed to going the taxable, tax deferred and tax free uh, rule of thumb route, the taxes saved over their lifetime, if we compare the two strategies is approximately 690 thousand dollars and also we can see here that their average tax rate drops by around 5.5 percent so what we're doing here is running a side-by-side -side comparison with about 13 different uh, withdrawal strategies across every tax bracket and we're saying that the sweet spot seems to be uh, the 12 percent tax bracket as far as giving them the lowest possible lifetime tax bill so if you look at a similar picture of that tax valley in comparison with roth conversions the blue is taxes paid over their lifetime with that Roth conversion strategy. And the yellow is just, again, if they want the rule of thumb route. So you can see in those early years where there's basically no income tax 
from 2025 to 2030, what this is doing is sort of smoothing out the ride and purposely recognizing income a little bit each year up to that 12% bracket to the point where in about 2044, and this table right here is gonna show this when I drop it down, they make their last tax payment for life. And that's because all their tax deferred dollars are in either tax-free or taxable buckets at this time. Now there is gonna be a break even point because again, you're sort of front loading some of the taxes paid at a lower tax bracket, which for them, we found that it was 12%. Rather than playing the waiting game, you can see if they just went their traditional retirement route, they would be forced in that 25% uh, tax bracket range once required minimum distributions start in their 70s. And for them, if we look at the break even over their lifetimes, again, in 2044 at ages 79, they are done paying taxes for life. Their cumulative taxes paid between now and when they do Roth conversions are projected to be around $531,000. If we scroll down further here, they don't start to get ahead here until 2050, where you can see the RMDs really start to work against them at around age 84. You can see this number on the right here is now exceeding the number on the left. So essentially the longer they live, the more advantageous Roth conversions would be for them. And when it comes down to projections like these, it is a good mix of art and science because none of us know how long you will be in retirement, which is just a nice way of saying, I don't know how long you're gonna be alive on this earth before you go to heaven. And then secondly, I don't know what future tax rates are gonna be. If the government does in fact raise taxes in the future, this picture could potentially look uh, even more favorable if we did Roth conversions, but that's a whole nother story that calls for a little bit of speculation. But in order to make sure this makes sense, at least for you, you need to understand if the benefit of doing this will exceed some of the trade-offs. And I'm gonna talk about three of the biggest ones I see that you definitely wanna think about for yourself. The first one is if you do retire early, where are you going to get health insurance? For this example, they wanna retire at age 60, so there is a five-year gap before they are eligible for Medicare. So do they go with the private health insurance, which can be pretty costly, or do they go with Obamacare? And a lot of you know this, but if you do decide to go the Obamacare uh, route, you can potentially save yourself a lot of money in premiums if your income is low enough, especially if there's two of you. So you wanna make sure that the benefit of Roth conversions will exceed your few years of health insurance costs before Medicare. And that's where analysis like this can help you decide. If we run the same analysis with the same assumptions, I assume we do not want to do any Roth conversions in order to keep income low until they start with Medicare, you can see that we sort of are back in that tax valley scenario again, where we don't have quite as much time to convert to Roth before you hit RMDs. So you can potentially save on health insurance premiums for a few years, but the long-term benefit of Roth conversions will change a bit here. And you can see if we project this out, there's not quite as much of a benefit in terms of taxes saved. As you can see, the total taxes, at least that are projected to save, will be around $115,000. But the break even is a little bit different here. You do break even around the same age, but you never stop paying taxes. So again, it might still be worth doing Roth conversions after Medicare plus going on Obamacare, but you need to evaluate if the tax savings from Roth conversions during those early retirement years will exceed what you'll be paying in premiums if you want the private health insurance route. Secondly, a lot of people are unaware what happens when you convert to Roth when you are actually on Medicare, and that is one of the tax traps known as IRMA. And here's essentially how it works. If we fast forward to Medicare age, and some of you on Medicare may know this, but when you file your taxes, Medicare will look at your modified adjusted gross income based on each year and add an additional monthly cost on top of your Medicare premiums based on the amount of money you make. And this is important when you're doing Roth conversions each year. Now, this is something that eventually goes away as your income changes, but it's something that you wanna look at. And the thresholds, for example, here uh, can be anywhere from $0 to $419 per month, depending on your income. For most folks, it's more of an annoyance than a huge factor for Roth conversions, but nonetheless, it's a trade-off and something you should be aware of when you're doing Roth conversions. And the last trade-off is not actually a financial one. It comes down to your own values and outlook on life. Like I showed you guys, there will be a break even depending on how long you live. And for some, this could be earlier in your life. For others, it might be much later. And again, if you don't live very long, the overall benefit is not gonna be quite as impactful. And secondly, it comes down to how you value your time because there's definitely a time commitment of doing this sort of analysis every year on your own. And for some folks like myself, I really nerd out on this and I love that I could do this every day. But for others, they might rather spend their time doing something they enjoy. 
So to put it all together, we went through the numbers and for them, the value of dollars saved targeting that 12% bracket is projected to exceed the value of waiting until after Medicare or just doing nothing. So that is a route they prefer to go because they have the potential to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes, which means more money in their pocket. And also they pass on a tax-free inheritance to their beneficiaries. But despite how powerful this could be for your early retirement, there are some hidden dangers that can cost you if you don't do these correctly. So I made a video that you should watch next where I talk about the hidden dangers of Roth conversions for early retirement and how you can avoid paying thousands in extra uh, unnecessary taxes and even penalties while trying to implement this strategy. And you can watch that by clicking right here. Once again, this is Matt, Certified Financial Planner and Advisor over at Wonder Advisors. Thanks for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one.